CataractCoach.com. Morgagni and cataract with lens milk. So a lot of liquefied lens cortex leaks into the anterior chamber. Now our guest surgeon here is Dr. Bradley Satcher from Illinois, USA. We're going to show you the video two times at normal speed, and you can see this is an absolutely intumescent or white cataract. So incisions being made there for the paracentesis using a Wexel sponge to fixate the eye. Here comes the tripan blue dye, and it's going to instill that inside the eye. We're going to show you the video two times normal speed in order to get through the video in a very timely manner. It's a little air bubble first. I like that air bubble technique. We used to do that very frequently when we stain the anterior lens capsule with ICG, ICG green. We don't do that anymore. Now we use tripan, but air bubble is a good idea. I like it. You can put, put less dye inside the eye. There's a good fill with the viscoelastic, and now it's going to make the main incision here. And fixating the eye with the forceps through the side port, here comes the main incision. So entering the side of the eye here, and let's see what we got for the rexes. Now here's going to be the exciting part. The excitement here is as soon as you make that first poke into the enter lens capsule, look what's going to happen. Here's the needle decompression. And as soon as you poke in, you're going to get a lot of lens milk coming out of there. So poking in with a needle and trying to aspirate. I like the bevel down technique. And didn't get a whole lot. Did we even puncture the lens capsule enough? Maybe we can poke in again. And then yep, getting out the air bubble. I like that idea. Makes for a prettier video. Now let's try again. Here comes a cystotome. So poking in with a cystotome and start on the rexus. And there it is. Lots of liquefied lens cortex, or as we call it, lens milk. But we can aspirate that out now. You can also displace it by injecting more viscoelastic. But that's just the beginning. I bet you're going to see a lot more of it. Now, true morgagnin cataracts where all the lens cortex is liquefied. And then you see that sunken nucleus that's kind of fallen down because of gravity towards the bottom of the capsule bag. And this very much looks like it. Wow, look at all that lens material, that lens cortex, that milk coming out. That is a lot. And remember, half of it is behind the nucleus, between the nucleus and the poster capsule. So do some gentle hydrodissection, you'll, you'll milk all that stuff out of there. It'll come right out. And you'll see the nucleus ends up being a little smaller than you think. So here, going in with a, a spatula, trying to rotate that around. Wow, that's a lot of liquefied lens material. This patient's going to be very happy. So now going in with a FACO probe, and let's see the technique that's going to be uh, used here. Aspirating against all that lens material. You can see that central nucleus is pretty dense. It's got a good density to it. And so there's some brunescence there to this nucleus. you got to definitely crank up the power on your FACO machine. This is, this is a case where I put the uh, ultrasonic power up much higher than normal. So if you normally use like 50%, this is a case you may need to use 100%. Get that cranked up and then be cognizant about using so much energy. And so let's see what we got here. A little kind of pit made in the middle and then buzzing with the probe. And looks like a vertical chop. Oh, nicely done. Very nice. And trying to propagate that. Remember, sometimes these can be fibrous and leathery and kind of hard to propagate. So I like this idea of doing a quadrant first. And even then, it doesn't want to separate fully. So the technique is beautiful. Rotate and chop, chop, and more chop. And what do you do? More chop. And what do you do? More chop. Keep at it. Don't stop. And these pieces may be connected on the very bottom like the petals of a flower. And so once you finally get one out, then you can help propagate the crack. Uh, throughout the rest of the nucleus. So there's one quadrant out, and don't worry if you don't get them all out. Just keep rotating and chop again. Like the technique, very nicely done. Obviously, this is a surgeon who has a tremendous amount of experience. So breaking up the cataract here, a little bit more chopping. Also, look at the FACO needle, how it's beautifully floating within the center of that sleeve. And here's a case where using a 2.75 or 2.8 incision is better. Because look at that sleeve, it's a much bigger sleeve and you get more flow of fluid. So when you're putting all that extra ultrasonic power through the eye, you're not going to have as much risk of a corneal wound burn. And in this case, the needle, the FACO needle, the metal needle stays beautifully centered within that silicone sleeve. That's an expert surgeon. And here at the end, of course, where's the cortex? There is none, it was already liquefied. We took it out at the very beginning. So at this point, the case is pretty easy, right? Clean up a little bit of that capsule bag. Let's get the lens in. You'll call this a day. And patient, of course, is going to have a miraculous outcome. As you already know, it's one of my favorite things of all, in, all of medicine, being able to go and take a patient from light perception vision and do a 10-minute surgery and bang, the patient's 20-20 or darn close to it. 
That is an absolute miracle of modern medicine. And we are so thankful to be able to do this surgery for our patients. 